Hello, my friends. This is Linda Lippin, and welcome to the Pilates Goddess Podcast. Well, hello, everybody. Welcome back one more time to the Pilates Goddess Podcast. This is your host, Linda Lippin, and today we are finishing our discussion, our breakdown of the Pilates mat. And then we're going to just do a few different things. And then I am going to be breaking down the Pilates reformer. Um, but I do want a little bit of a break in that kind of programming uh, before I do that. So today we are talking seal through push up. Now, as I always tell uh, my mat class clients, seal is just another rolling, right? So we've done rolling like a ball. We've done open leg rockers. We have done boomerangs. <laughs> and now we come to seal. And seal, like after all of these other exercises, is very much a doable thing. So for seal, you start kind of in the rolling like a ball position, right? With your knees bent. You take both hands, you put them in between your legs and you grab your ankles from underneath. Not your feet, not your heels, your actual ankles. It makes a difference in executing the move. And then you rock back, your knees are a little open, you're round in your spine, your feet are ideally maybe a half an inch to an inch off the ground, and then you're going to, full version, you're going to clap your feet from your hips three times, one, two, three, you're going to roll back to your shoulder blades, clap there with high hips, one, two, three, Steve Giordano used to say, you want your toes like an inch off the floor, maybe on either end or half inch off the floor and then come back up. Same thing. So it's clap two, three, inhale back, clap two, three, exhale up and balance. Once again, not for your flexion intolerant people. Uh, seal can also sometimes be an issue for people with sacroiliac instability um, or hip replacements simply because of the angle, but you can kind of play with that. Um, people like seal. Seal is fun. So when you have, you know, healthy spine clients do seal, they like it and it's fun. After seal, we do crab. Now with crab, you have your knees bent, your knees are into your chest, your ankles are crossed. And then you are taking a hold of your feet from the front. You rock back to your shoulder blades. You quickly change the cross of your ankles like you're a little hermit crab. And then you roll up, you roll over your feet, and you with control bring the crown of your head, the top of your head, to the mat and then you pull your abdominals in like crazy so you are basically balanced with your abs in between your knees and your head and then you really pull up through those abs to rock back change the cross of your legs when you're at your shoulder blades and then come back up and do the same thing so yes seal involves pulling forward and bringing weight onto the top of your skull but ideally, you are so pulled up through your abdominals, your hands are holding onto your feet, that you control that landing. You're not slamming into the crown of your head. All right? If you're slamming into the crown of your head, this is not the exercise for you. Just letting you know. Um, people can, of course, do the, the basic, you know, just rocking back, changing cross of leg and coming up and balancing. Um, but for me, if you're going to bother doing crab, do it, have a healthy spine with it, um, and get that lift. I'm letting you know right now that, I mean, I have, you know, neck issues uh, with degen degenerating vertebrae and discs. 
And when I can get the weight on the crown of my head and really lift up my abdominals and I get some good stretch going on in my neck, it feels really, really good. Um, interestingly enough, crab is actually the rolling that feels the best to me at this particular point in time, even though it's, you know, one of the more advanced rollings. Now, the crab shows up in the studio. Um, if you're a more contemporary teacher or you go to a club Pilates or a more contemporary studio, you may have never seen the headstand work. There is headstand work on the reformer. There is headstand work on the chair. There is headstand work on the spine corrector and the small barrel. So just know that there are places where you can definitely play with this work around the studio, but this is not work to play with unless you know it and unless you're being spotted. Okay, these some of these advanced exercises are really like good things to do when somebody's watching you and you're being spotted. Then we go into rocking. Rocking is 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 a known exercise, right? We do rocking in yoga, we do rocking in fitness. And you're coming now onto the stomach. You are getting a little bit bigger than we have in seal and crab. You reach back with your arms, you take a hold of your ankles, ideally your feet if you can't get to the ankles. And first you're just working on lengthening the front of the body and contracting the back with the abs in. You're pressing the hips down, you're getting length in the hip crease. You press your legs, ankles back into your hands, lifting your legs up a little bit, lifting the knees up a little bit, lifting your chest up a little bit. You keep going with that. And if you can get a nice lift, you can go into a rocking in this prone position. Um, you know, similar to swan dive, except your knees are bent. You have a lot more um, extension going on through the hips and through your quads. You're trying to keep the knees as parallel as you can and get some push to get moving. This, you know, this is similar to the ballet stretches, right? There is also rocking on the reformer that you can do with your feet in the straps on the long box with your head facing the foot bar. Okay, there's a lot in this uh, potent little move. And for folks who maybe are not going to do the rocking, they can at least do the stretch. All right. The stretch will be fine. This again, if you take out the actual rocking movement, this is an exercise that most people can do. Um, hyperextension intolerant folks will be the only people that this is bad for i.e. your folks with a spondylolisthesis or um, lumbar stenosis. Then we move into control balance. So what is, con you know, control balance, you're in a shoulder stand. Your legs are basically in that straight jackknife up to the ceiling. You lift up your arms and you drop one leg towards your body and grab it grab the ankle in your hands, and then switch, and switch. So you see you have elements in this, again, of things we've done before, right? You've got your jackknife position. You've got your single straight leg stretch or your scissor stretch happening. But now we've kind of flipped it, and we're doing it in a different relationship to gravity where it's really hard. Now, this exercise, once again, if you've got osteoporosis, if you've got neck issues, um, if you've got, you know, glaucoma, high blood pressure, you want to avoid head below heart, so you're not going to do it. Control balance actually shows up directly on the reformer where we take the control balance into an, an arabesque, into a roll off of the carriage and back on. And then finally, and I talk actually, I'm going to say something now, and I know I've said actually like 50 times, but that's okay. 
I talk in my Pilates for Back Pain e-course about control balance. And for your flexion intolerant clients, you can have them do control balance with their hips on top of a roller, on top of a pillow or folded blanket, um, on top of the small barrel or the spine corrector. Um, so that they are not really resting all the way up in the shoulder stand, but their hips are elevated enough to give them some work and some extra stretch or give you some work and some extra stretch. So it is modifiable. And then we have the push up, right? So for the push up, we um, ideally you come out of that last control balance. And you roll down and you stand right right up. Kind of like we got down for the mount, you come up. And then you go to the back of the mat. And for the Pilates push-up, you're rolling down, you're rolling down, you're walking out, hand following hand. You're finding your plank, you're keeping elbows close to ribs. And bending the elbows and straightening the elbows three times. Heels are together. You lift back up with the hips. You walk your hands back in. You stand up. You do it again. Now, this is a push-up. So we know that wide elbows is different from elbows at 45 degrees, is different from elbows into the ribs. We also know heels together is different from heels apart, right, in terms of stability, We also know that being on two legs is much more stable than being on one leg. So that's what we would do to make these harder, right, is suddenly you can play with the elbow positions. You can start in an arabesque and do the whole rolling out push-ups and coming back on one leg and then switch. Okay, you can, um, I remember Steve Giordano used to make the really strong men in mat class do clap push-ups and then walk back up. So, you know, you can really kind of play with this. Now to modify it, to modify it, you can have people come onto their knees. You can again have them come back to that all fours position and just play with sending one leg back, one arm forward, and just different ways of tripod or bipod, um, as it were, on the mat. And then you come up and you're done. Done with the mat. There we are. That was a lot of work, guys. If you've been following this, I say just, you know, go through. Go through that whole mat. Go through that whole mat even if you just do one repetition of each exercise. If you're doing your advanced training now and you want to drill this mat in, that's really what I recommend doing. Make yourself flashcards. Seriously. It's like remembering multiple multiplication tables when we were kids. So make your flashcards. Um, Keep drilling the the work in your own body. So sit there with your list of exercises and do one or two repetitions of each just to get the order down and to get the transitions in. Um, If there's exercises you've never seen, please, please have somebody with you when you're trying them, especially when you're looking at things like, um, like crab and boomerang and control balance and things, you know, where you're, where you're weight bearing on your head or you are, you know, flailing around in space. Um, you know, if there's things you're not sure about, and I'm not saying they need to be live. You could have somebody watching you on zoom. You could just have like your husband standing there or your partner standing there, um, just to make sure you don't fall. You could just tell them what to look for and, um, and do these. But especially if you're a Pilates teacher, you should know all these mat exercises. Again, do do I do all of these exercises in their full versions anymore? No, I don't. Did I at some point in my life? Yes, I did. Uh, So, you know, do them as best you can. Learn them. And I'm serious. What you learn in in doing these mat exercises 
especially if you have the idea of where, what the shape looks like and where else that is in the studio, it's going to help bring the system together for you and for most, if not all, of your clients. So my friends, today was a short one, but that's okay. Uh, I really, really hope that this was useful for you. And I am going to create a playlist that just has the uh, mat breakdown on it. And I would also like to hear from you guys about what kind of playlists you might like to see, because I've got, you know, what, 112 episodes up now. So I can create a little playlist for back pain or playlist for osteoporosis or playlist for, uh, for different things. So do me a favor. Let me know. If you're on Spotify, I have a Q and a right here on Spotify. You can answer. If you want to, you can email me Linda at lindalippin.com. You can contact me, uh, DM me on any social media or leave a comment, um, on one of my posts. And I really am interested in, in hearing how you guys would like these different episodes to be connected um, moving forward and what works for you. So my friends, have a fabulous, fabulous rest of your day. Have a great weekend. We are like veering right into the holidays here, um, I think worldwide. So take deep breaths, be patient with people. Remember everybody is just trying to do their best and let people know if you notice that they're out there trying to do their best. Now, I was on the subway today coming back from the studio. It's raining out, and there was a woman on the subway with five kids of varying ages. And she was so good at looking at the toddler and looking at the older ones and the games that they were playing together, even when they were physical, were very much non violent. Um, she was teaching them all like thumb wrestling without moving the rest of your body, just your thumb, uh, little things like that. She was stopping them from any game that involved like slapping or, or hitting or things. And I looked over at her and I said, if no one else has told you this today, you are doing a great job. I could not wrangle five kids on the subway on a rainy day and you're doing it and you are knocking it out of the park. And she beamed. She got this huge smile. She was like, thank you so much. No one ever tells me that. So, so tell people if you notice that they look good or, or are glowing or are handling something difficult really well, because, you know, I don't know about you, but I think canceling five kids on the subway is kind of difficult. And this woman was doing it well. So <laughs> that's it from me. Have a great weekend. And as always, thank you so, so much for listening. I totally appreciate you. And as always, if you love the podcast, please leave a rating and a written review. Please share some episodes and please get in touch with me about playlists that you might like to see. All right, my friends, have a good one. Bye. Thank you so much for listening to the Pilates Goddess podcast. Music brought to you by Nerd Salad. Please leave a review on Apple Podcasts, especially if you liked it. And please like, share, and subscribe wherever you listen to your podcasts. Thanks.